Intel's desktop Arc GPUs haven't even launched in Europe or the US yet, but already a lot of reviewers got their hands on graphics cards imported from China and as a result there are plenty of pre-launch reviews available. And they all have one thing in common. Intel's first desktop GPU doesn't look so hot. At best it can compete with Nvidia's GTX 1650 or a Radeon RX 6400, but almost all reviews are overshadowed by wonky drivers, stability issues, horrible frame times and strange behavior like the reliance on DirectX 12 or Rebar to even function in some games. Most of these issues are clearly driver related and Intel is working hard to improve the quality of its software. They even tackled the topic openly in videos with Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus, which is a good move in my opinion. But as you know, I like to take a step further, comparing hardware on a silicon level. And without getting ahead of myself, just let me say this, software isn't the only problem Intel is facing with their GPUs. To start off this video, we will first take a quick look at reviews of Intel's Arc A380 to establish a performance baseline before diving straight into the chip itself, comparing Intel's Alchemist G11 chip to AMD's Navi24 and Nvidia's old Turing-based TU117. Finally, we will discuss the problems Intel is facing. Intel's Arc A380 is a pure entry-level offering. Even a tier below cars like Nvidia's RTX 3050 or AMD's RX 6500 XT. Its competitors, price and performance-wise, are the RX 6400 from AMD and since Nvidia doesn't offer any modern cards in this low performance tier, the closest GPU would be the 3 year old GTX 1650, which is still being sold today. I think it's important to keep in mind that we are talking about basically the lowest performance level, even below what a lot of people would consider entry-level gaming GPUs. And I have to say, when I saw the first reviews, the A380 didn't even look half bad, especially from a pure performance perspective. In almost all reviews, the A380 slots right in with its competitors, staying within a 5% range of the 6400 or 1650 when comparing average FPS as 1080p. The problem is, this is where the good news stop. Minimum FPS and frame times trail behind the competition and on top the current drivers are far from finished, resulting in a somewhat unstable experience. While most DirectX 12 and Vulkan titles run ok and performance is as expected, games using older APIs fall off and sometimes don't work at all. And then you have the strange quirks like Rebar being a requirement for the card to perform well and some games won't even start without it. Igor from Igor's lab even discovered a strange bottleneck where the A380 suffers a large performance loss when playing at 720p, something that is definitely an option with such a low end card. But this video is neither a review of the A380 nor a rant about Intel drivers and the most recent reviews seem to show that new driver versions are actually improving, albeit only a little bit. The point I'm trying to make is that purely based on average FPS performance numbers at first glance it seems like Intel has a somewhat competitive product on its hand. If Intel is able to fix the stability issue, iron out all the quirks and offer the same performance across a majority of games, Alchemist delivers on its promise, or does it? Before we go any further, we have to define what a competitive product actually means. Because depending on if you are a consumer or the company selling the product, your point of view can be completely different. For us consumers, there are basically only two important aspects to a graphics card. How does it perform and what does it cost? The famous saying goes, there are no bad products only bad prices. Of course, there are other parts to the equation like power draw, noise levels and sometimes even what the cards look like. But these are often more dependent on the ARBs than on the actual GPU itself. For a company like Intel, a competitive product not only has to meet performance targets, but the production costs need to be at a point where they can make a profit off of the chips they are selling. If your chips are really expensive to manufacture and you miss your performance targets, you have to sell expensive hardware at a discount, which not only cuts into your margins, but might actually force you to sell at a loss. We have already established which GPUs Arc 380 is competing against performance wise. Now let's take a look at how these cards stack up when we compare them on a silicon level. Intel's Alchemist generation is based on two different GPU dies, the bigger ACM G10, which will be used for cards like the A580, 750 and the flagship 
770 and then the smaller ACM G11 chip used in the A310 and of course the A380. Interestingly Intel was open with the specs of these chips and for this very reason we have exact die size and transistor numbers. The smaller ACM G11 has 7.2 billion transistors on a 157mm square die produced in TSMC's N6 process node. The A380 uses the full 8 XE cores which consists of 1024 ALUs, 64 ROPs and a 96 bit memory interface with 6 GB of GDDR6 memory. Intel is using cutting edge technology for its new Arc Alchemist GPUs, no question about it. But what about its competitors? Let's start with NVIDIA's GTX 1650, a GPU released in April of 2019. It is based on the Turing TU117 chip, which consists of 4.7 billion transistors on a 200mm squared die produced in TSMC's 12nm node. As you can see, there are already very obvious differences. Intel's ACM G11 is using a whopping 53% more transistors, and even though Nvidia's TU117 is produced in a much older 12 nanometer process, its die size is only about 27% larger. There is no question that a 200 mm squared 12 nanometer die is a lot cheaper to produce compared to a 157 mm squared 6 nanometer die. But it doesn't stop there. The GTX 1650 uses only 4 GB of cheaper GDDR5 memory. And while the memory interface is a bit larger, the overall bill of materials is certainly much lower than that of the A380. And the worst is yet to come. As I mentioned before, Intel's ARC A380 is based on a fully enabled ACM G11 chip, while Nvidia's GTX 1650 is a binned version of the TU117, with disabled compute units in order to further increase the yield. Only 896 of the 1024 shaders are enabled, and faster 1650 Ti and Max-Q mobile chips are also based on the same TU117 die. To recap, not only does the ACM G11, on which Intel's ARC A380 is based upon, use over 50% more transistors than Nvidia's TU117, but the equally fast GTX 1650 doesn't even use the full TU117 die. This is on top of the fact that Nvidia's design is over 3 years old. It's using cheaper components on the PCB itself, and even though it's based on a much older process node, power consumption and thus the efficiency levels are very close. Intel is basically using tech from 3 years in the future to build a GPU with a much higher transistor budget and at best getting similar performance level. I don't think I have to explain to you how absolutely bad this is for Intel. Now I have to dial back my Intel bashing a bit because there is more to a GPU than just gaming performance. GPUs also include a lot of other features and Intel's Alchemist architecture is a lot more advanced in different areas. For one, Nvidia's TU117 isn't a RTX chip, meaning it doesn't support the latest DirectX 12 Ultimate and lacks supported hardware ray tracing. This implementation does cut into the transistor budget and as such it is not a one-to-one -one comparison. In addition, the media engine Intel has designed for Alchemist is actually ahead of its competition, even better than current trend Ampere or RDNA2 GPUs. Intel supports all current and next-gen codecs not only for D but also for N code. A more advanced and more capable media engine eats up transistors for breakfast. But even keeping all of these aspects in mind, the current performance to transistor ratio of the ACM G11 chip looks bad, especially compared to a 3 year old design from Nvidia. It doesn't even really matter if all the extra transistors are used up for hardware ray tracing and D and N code, or if Alchemist is just a lot less efficient with its transistors. Intel either needs to sell these cards at a much higher price than a GTX 1650, or they will have to accept a much lower margin. And since Intel is competing on price, you know how Intel has decided. The next competitor is AMD's RX6400, or rather the Navi24 chip it is based upon. And this time the competition is a lot more straightforward, since Navi24 is a recent design, conveniently also produced in TSMC's N6 process node, and it does support hardware ray tracing, though its media engine is quite lacking compared to that of the A380. The Navi24 die is built with 5.4 billion transistors and again we can see that Intel's ACM G11 is using about 34% more transistors which is a really large gap. 
Now we're 24 clocks in at 107 mm squared, and thus ACM G of 11 has a 47% larger die. Interestingly, the die size difference is even bigger than the transistor count, even though both chips are using the same process node, which means Intel achieves a lower transistor density. But this doesn't seem to be architecture specific, since the bigger ACM G10 chip fits about 21.7 billion transistors into a 396 mm squared die, resulting in a much higher transistor density. The difference is most likely called by the ratio of compute units to the media engine, since both ACM G11 and G10 use the same media engine, but G10 has four times the compute units, which can be packed more densely. Continuing our comparison with Navi24, the bill of materials for the RX6400 again looks a lot cheaper. Not only does AMD use only 4GB of GDDR6 memory compared to the 6 of the A380, Navi24 also uses a smaller memory interface and has less PCI Express lanes. Again, the resulting 1080p performance is very similar, with advantages for AMD in minimum FPS and frame times. And like with the GTX 1650, the paint for Intel doesn't stop since the RX6400 is again based on a binned version of Navi24, thus further increasing the transistor disparity between the two GPUs. A fully enabled Navi24 die powers the much more capable RX6500 XT, which runs circles around a A380, and I don't even want to start to talk about the efficiency advantage for AMD. The only redeeming qualities of Intel's A380, again, is the much more capable media engine. And while it is nice to have, it's not a game changer for most consumers and not something Intel can use to command a higher price. As you can see, different point of views result in a vastly different analysis of how competitive Intel's ARC A380 and the ACM G11 chip it is based on really are. It's only when we dig a little bit deeper and look at the silicon behind the cards that Intel's actual problem becomes apparent. Intel's Alchemist architecture requires a lot more transistors compared to its competition from Nvidia and AMD. Some of it might be explained by a more capable media engine and the implementation of new features. But in the end, Intel has to deal with a larger die, worse yields, and as a result, higher production costs. Even the larger ACM G10 chip which offers a very competitive transistor density, still turns out much larger than the competition. With 406mm squared on TSMC's N6 process, it is over 20% larger than AMD's Navi22, which is still using TSMC's older N7 node, and even Nvidia's GA104 chip on Samsung's 8nm process only clocks in at 392mm squared. And we already know that a fully enabled ACM G10, aka ARC A77, most likely won't be able to compete with either a RX 6700 XT or a GTX 3070. Alchemist is too big and too slow. I know these are hard words, but that's the reality Intel has to face. And keep in mind, I'm basically disregarding all drivers and compatibility issues here. My baseline is a future Intel driver that is stable and delivers consistent performance across all APIs without frame time issues. I'm giving Intel a head start and they still can't compete. When I started working on this video last week, the more I digged into the actual stats, the more concerned I got. As such, it is not really surprising to me that we just got rumors that Intel apparently is thinking about shutting down their discrete GPU division or possibly delaying the upcoming Battlemage generation. I literally have zero inside information and I don't know if there is any truth to these rumors. On one hand, I think it's pretty out there that Intel would spend so much R&D to then stop the program. On the other hand, the recent quarterly earnings didn't look good at all. Intel is down on revenue and income and had to lower future guidance by quite a bit. Everything is possible when shareholders are scared. I think it's unlikely that Intel will stop their entire GPU program, but I could imagine a refocus on HPC and server applications away from gaming or a delay of upcoming products. In any case, now you know there's more to Alchemist's failure than just bad drivers. Designing GPUs is hard and writing good drivers is even harder. Right now, the unknown is the software. Just imagine how different the first reviews would have turned out if Intel actually had stable drivers from day one. It wouldn't change the suboptimal design of the GPUs itself, but Intel could have focused their marketing on the areas where they are actually ahead, like the media engine for example. Maybe the lack in performance is entirely due to drivers and with upcoming revisions a A380 might compete with or even beat a 6500 XT. And at that point, the transistor budget, the die size would become a bit more sensible again. I know it's a lot of hopium, but especially early drivers have shown a lot of potential for improvements in the past. On the other hand, Alchemist could suffer from an unfixable hardware flaw, which would mean Intel is out of luck. 
In any case, Intel needs to figure out their software and hardware before they start launching their next generation Battlemage GPUs, because a second failure would kill the Arc brand for good, if there's any future Arc GPUs to begin with. Intel's Arc GPUs went from my number one 2022 hype product to a complete disaster in no time. I knew something was off when the hype marketing stopped at the end of last year. Intel became quiet and then release timeframes got pushed back. The current graphics card Duopoly isn't great for consumers and the past two years were especially hard for PC gamers who just wanted to buy a new GPU. I was really hoping for a new contender in the gaming GPU market and Intel definitely has the potential to pull it off. They just need to stick with it and focus on getting their software right. Not an easy feat if your competitors literally had years to improve their drivers. I really hope the doomsday rumors of Intel cutting their GPU program will turn out to be wrong. It would be an even bigger blow to us consumers than the current Alchemist disaster already is. Now it's your turn to tell me your thoughts on the whole Intel Alchemist drama. Do you have any hope for Intel's GPUs? Do you think they can fix the drivers? And what is your opinion on the rumors that Intel might be giving up after one failed generation? Leave a comment down below. I'm looking forward to your input. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.